<laughs> Barry Melrose joining us now. Wow. South Glens Falls man himself. Although Glens Falls. Glens Falls. Glens Falls. Falls. All right. Have you already moved out of there for the week for yeah. the year? Yeah, we're gone for the week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what, there were some snow flurries about three weeks ago. My wife saw them out the window, and she said, let's go. That was it. That was it. <laughs> you were gone. I had no choice, but I get to come back for the 70-degree weather, so it's it's been awesome. Yeah, thanks for that, Barry. How, how long have you been calling <laughs> Glens Falls your home Since in uh, the summer? In the summer, since uh, basically 94. Wow. And, and a bunch of years before that, because I played there in the American League for a number of years, and I coached there for three years, so... Glens Falls has basically been our home since mid '80s. How'd you choose Glens Falls? It sort of chose me. Uh, Detroit uh, sent me down to end my illustrious career in the minors, and uh, they sent me to this place called Glens Falls, New York. And uh, they were called the Adirondack Red Wings. I didn't even know there was a town called Glens Falls. And then uh, I landed at the Albany Airport, and I got in a cab and said, "Take me to Glens Falls." And uh, it was a lady driver, and she said, "Are you sure you want?" It? That's a long way. And I said, <laughs> "Go ahead." I, uh, so I, uh, she started driving. And it started snowing, and she started driving, and kept snowing, and she kept driving, and kept and snowing. And that was July. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I finally saw a sign, South Glens Falls. And I said, well, is this it? Oh, no. No, we got a little ways to go. This is yeah. south, yeah. Uh, and then we, uh, we got into Glens Falls, and they took me to the Queensbury Hotel. And, and uh, I called my wife, and I said, you ain't going to believe where we're at. <laughs> I, I thought I was in, you know, the worst place in the world and, you know, found out it's a place we love and a place we'll live the rest of our lives. That's really cool. Yep. Uh, so that's hum- a great area. The Northeast is a great area. Humbugs and South Glens Falls. You ever been there? And of course I've been there. Yeah? There's no places I haven't been. Ah, I go jam. there all the time. I love it. Our buddy Keith, That's a long man. drive yeah. for you guys. Yeah, but, it's you know, worth the trip, some, though, yeah, Barry. some things are worth <laughs> the Barry, trip. Barry, if you've been there, you know Humbugs and South Glens Falls is worth the trip. But, uh, no, I've been there a bunch of times. So. The track? You a fan? I, I, I love the track. I'm not, a big, I'm not a big gambler, but I love the track. I love, you know, we, we go there two, three times a year. Uh, it's just a spectacular place. If, if, some, if you've never been to the track in Saratoga, you've got to go. Two things you've got to do. You've got you to gotta go to the track. You've got to play Saratoga National, play Sagamore. Um, you know, got to go to the Sagmore Hotel, things like that. Those are some of the things you have to do in uh, in the Northeast. ESPN's Barry Melrose with Armin in the back. We're live from Bristol, the ESPN campus. What are thanks, you guys doing here? Thanks to Taylor Tech Security. Once a year, we like yeah, to come and up. just bug you guys. Yeah. That's really yeah. what, what we do, to we be honest figure with It's you. harder for you to, to ignore our emails and phone calls if yes. we're right here. If we're face-to-face. <laughs> we found Brian Windhorse. He met us in the cafeteria. We talked to Adam Schefter in that hallway right out I there. I haven't been in this building in years. <laughs> that's you guys, what he tells us. You guys guys have seen like what this place is like now yeah yeah like, this used to be i'm saying maybe hr in the old days or something like <laughs> I, I, i've come, come in here for something HR. Uh, but uh, uh i haven't been in here in a long time and and uh you know i, I knew this was building five you know why why see how observant you are oh, it's the only one the the numbers on a hockey jersey out of boy yeah, oh, yes I, I see i i pay attention nicky litzman Yep. Oh. Nikki Lidstrom's uh, on on this building, so I always know where Building 5 is. But well, I that a good one. I just but, haven't been uh, in here before in a long time. Wow. All right, speaking of hockey, a lot of Rangers fans in the uh, the Capital yep. Region who are wondering just how far this Rangers team can go. They're they're really good. Uh, they're You know, I can make an argument they're the best team in the East. Montreal's numbers show they're the best, but they're not the best. Um, the Rangers got everything. they got the great defense. You've got the good goaltender. Uh, they're getting goals from a lot of different people. The young kids are getting better and better, and they know how to win. Uh, they've shown that in the past couple of years. So I like the Rangers a lot. I like Montreal. I love their goaltending. Uh, I think Tampa Bay's for real. I, I, I don't think they're going to go away. Islanders are like them. Uh, you know, it's going to be a dogfight in the East. Detroit, uh, good hockey team. This, you know, if they make the playoffs this year, great job. Uh, if Boston makes the playoffs this year, great job. Uh, the East is, I think, you know, I think in the NHL right now there's only eight teams under 500, some crazy number like that with the with the wins and regulation and stuff. It's just, you know, you need so many points to make the playoffs now. Is there something specific the Rangers did this off season, or you see in this team that could put them just uh, that one extra step that they've been missing so close the last two years? Well, Zuccarella, uh, don't forget Zuccarella got hurt last year. Yeah, and now he's their, you know, he's their hottest offensive player. And he makes that line go. So, you know, sometimes you, you get an injury like that. And if you're not, you know, Chicago can overcome an injury, you know, because of their depth and stuff. But, you know, if you're, if you're just there and you're stretching. Uh, you saw Tampa Bay last year. Johnson got hurt the, on the triplet line. The triplet line uh, was the best line in the NHL for three playoff rounds. And then Johnson got hurt and they didn't score very much against Chicago. So that, that injury last year, Zuccarello really hurt them. Uh, he's back playing very well right now. Nash is a key. 
you know, if Nash comes and has a good playoffs and, and scores a few goals, uh, you know, that's a very tough guy to stop come playoff time. ESPN's Barry Melrose with Armin in the back. We're live from Bristol today. Thanks to Taylor Tech Security, TaylorTechLLC.com. In the overtime period now in the NHL, three on three. You like this? Uh, I love it. Uh, really? But I, I like shootout. Uh, I have no problem with shootout. Um, but the three on three was designed uh, to have less shootouts. And, and what happened with the four on four was a good idea at the start, but the coaches became so good at, at developing a system. Uh, four and four basically became a chess match with nobody moving and hardly any scoring chances. So now, geez, that, that last night we had uh, a, a two on a two on O, and then a br- two breakaways. It's just fantastic right now. I know that, you know some of the players are starting to complain about it, but I, I love watching it. So uh, that's all I go by. If I love watching it, and I know the fans love watching it, I think the NHL has to worry about that. I think that's one of the reasons you do things in in, in pro sports. The fans like it, and and they do like the three on three. Mary Melrose with Armin in the back from the ESPN campus. Connor McDavid, a lot of people hail him as the next Crosby, the next Gretzky. Broken clavicle, Edmonton Orioles, how big of a deal is that? You know, you know what's funny? You mentioned Gretzky, uh, and I haven't had a chance to tell the story because Connor McDavid got hurt. Because uh, everyone's saying, what, you know, is this the most um, you know, impacted young player you've seen since Gretzky? Is this the biggest hype since Gretzky? And people forget, like, Gretzky came out of the WHA. And when he came to the NHL his first year, uh, there was articles all over North America how these old NHL players said, well, that, he was great in the WHA, but that the very inferior league. He won't do anything in the NHL. Well, he comes and just mops up everybody in the NHL. So I always laugh at that. But the hype was down because people thought the NHL was so much better than the WHA that they would be able to stop him. And he just won a scoring race his first year. Uh, the, the guys, the kid's great. Connor McDavid. Uh, for once, the hype didn't uh, uh, outshine the player. The, wow. The kid is great. He's uh, that good. He's Edmonton's best player. He's Edmonton's best player. He's uh, 12 points. He was leading the Oilers in scoring. No, he, um, he, he was second in scoring in the Oilers. He was leading rookie scoring. Uh, he run, Power play runs through him. Uh, he wants the puck. Uh, great kid. Interviews are awesome. Very humble. And uh, you should check in on this, too. And I, I believe his dad played for the Adirondack Red Wings. No doubt. And then, oh, wow. And then, uh, and then went to uh, Kalamazoo. Uh, so I, I think, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that his dad did play for Adirondack for a little while. Well, let's see if we can get producer guys to get him on, then. But uh, <laughs> he, uh, the kid's the real deal. He's, he's an awesome, awesome player. We, so. we are so blessed with young players this year. Dylan Larkin for Detroit is awesome. Uh, Max Domi, Ty's son, is a great player. Uh, there's two or three great European players also. We This is a great year for young players in the NHL. Barry, okay, we've been on this campus all day long. We got here uh 9, 9.30 this morning, and we've asked everybody, what's your craziest Bristol story? What's the craziest thing that's happened to you here on campus? Well, one of the funniest things is, uh, like, during the playoffs, like, I'm, I'm here every day, and I'm here, I'm here till you know, until the games are over sometimes. That's 2, 2.30 in the morning. So I... I have a cigar, you know, in between games I'll go out and have a cigar. And I'm sitting, have you seen where the chairs are from Yankee Stadium and stuff right around? They, they have three chairs from three build, buildings that have been taken down anyway. So oh, cool. It, it's right by the, the center of the football stadium. Okay. The f- football field. We need to fire our tour guide. We have yeah, never we gotten that there. Our, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, so I'm sitting there having a cigar, and it's about 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> and all of a sudden I see this gigantic guy trying to get into the uh, uh, cafeteria. And you guys saw cafeterias all swipe cards. You can't yeah. get anywhere here without a swipe card. So this gigantic guy in basketball shorts and a, and a basketball jersey is trying to get into the uh, to, uh, the cafeteria. And he's trying every door. And it's getting funnier and funnier because he's walking around and walking around. <laughs> and finally he got under a light. And I, it was magic. So I'm, I'm, it's <laughs> no, 2 in the morning. Really. I'm having a cigar. I'm in Bristol, Connecticut, <laughs> waiting to do a hit for Sports Center, And I'm seeing... Magic come up in his gym clothes. Arguably the greatest basketball player. <laughs> Can't get into cafeteria. I said, hey, Magic, what do you need? Barry, can you get me in? i got to get a drink, man. I'm really thirsty. So, so that's, I, uh, that was a great story. I think it's funny that every crazy story revolves around the cafeteria here at Bristol. That's true. Well, you guys, <laughs> the cafeteria now is exquisite. Like, when I first got here in, in 94, it was basically like machines, vending right. machines. And then it got a little bit better, and the last one was really neat. But this one now is spectacular. And, it's, uh, it's, this, it's the we nucleus. experience of today. Yeah. Is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's it the is nucleus the of the campus. It is, it is the brain. Awesome. So, uh, 
But uh, and the thing is, people don't understand. ESPN's a lot like the commercials. Yeah. You know, you'll be walking in the hallway. Uh, I was walking uh, last year. I was walking uh, uh, to, to the cafeteria from the set to get a coffee uh, at our Starbucks, and uh, Snoop Dogg's in the hallway. <laughs> so I, so I uh, he's got an entourage about twenty guys, and so I walk by him and he says, "Hey, hey, you're the hockey guy." <laughs> So I, so I come back and I talk to Snoop Dogg for a while. Snoop Dogg. And, uh, you know, Ronda Rousey, I did some stuff with Ronda Rousey the other day. Uh, you know, but it's just like the commercials. You'll see, you know, it's like we're, we're in the cafeteria and, and I'm there with uh, Slareth and uh, we've got Legler there. You know, all, we're all sitting together having a coffee and stuff, waiting to do our hits on Sports Center. So, you know, it's very similar to what you see in the commercials at ESPN. Well, ESPN's Barry Melrose. You look just as magnificently handsome in person as you do on TV, my you friend. You guys have been here a long time. Those are <laughs> some, some good-looking threads, man. That I like nice that. That is a nice suit. Yes, that is, just so everybody of knows. I didn't get in Glens Falls. Oh. No. Yeah. Where, where's your tailor at? I got Actually, I got a really good one here. Really? That makes here, sense. Here and in West Hartford. Okay. So the, actually, this is sort of the cultural center of uh, the Northeast right here in this corridor this area a lot of yeah. stuff going on yeah that's right <laughs> yeah now barry melrose thanks uh, so much for spending time what, what are you are you on sports center tonight what are you doing uh sports centers i gotta go get all my tvs straightened up in my room uh there's a lot of games tonight and then i'll do a sports center hit at 10 25 and then uh the 11 o'clock sports center and then maybe the van pelt show and then the one o'clock sports center cool how was that van pelt yeah. show you enjoyed jumping on with him at night oh, he's great scotty's got a great sense of humor he loves hockey too he scotty loves hockey he loves hockey players, how tough they are and how aggressive they are and how courageous they are. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's got the right type of personality and, and sense of humor to, uh, to like hockey players. So, yeah, Scotty's got, Scotty's got a great show. Barry Melrose, thanks for coming to see My us, pleasure, man. I appreciate your time, sir. Say hello to everybody back to the Northeast for me. You we got, got it. it. You got it.